um, this is like this is Moji. So I'll be giving feedback for the ADMs. Um, well done, everyone. ADMs, Scrum Masters, everyone. Well done for your presentation tonight. So I'm just quickly going to start with Zekiat. Um, that's the ADM for the elite um team. Um um I the, the first question I put down when I started listening to your um presentation, I guess I I joined a beast list you started already, but the part where I joined, um the slide you were showing was talking about I think that was the one where you were uh, showing the um sorry the cost the your cost breakdown and everything so i i love that um slide the costs your budget the breakdown of what you've spent for each um sprint what the total is what you have remaining what you have spent so far that was beautiful well done i love that template also um your risk and issue update i think is a bit vague especially in the area of the description I was reading the description and it wasn't really clear. So I assume if you're submitting that to a stakeholder who you could not give details to, maybe the stakeholder was not um, at a demo where you're able to explain better to them, it won't be clear to them. So if you can go back, because of the time, I don't want to tell you to share your screen and show you and all that. But if you go back to it, just check the description that you have in your um, the risk and issue update that you gave. Um, you'll find that they're a bit vague. They weren't really describing what actually happened. It was too generic kind of, uh, I couldn't pinpoint that this was actually what the risk was. Um, that was there. So please, um, for example, I think one of which you just wrote technical challenges. What specifically, you know, what exactly is that technical challenge that the team went through that was a risk? So you need to be more specific when you're putting things down in your reports. Yeah, you can you can um, put it down as a, a bullet point or as a title, but it should be something that would communicate what exactly the point is, even if you intend you know, to explain. You know, like I said, if I'm looking at the slides and I'm not at the presentation, I won't be able to pick what technical challenge, what that meant. Okay, so just be... Uh, more specific a bit when, with your description, when you're giving your description also. And then um, with your uh, red log also, I wasn't really too sure what it was depicting because you were using the bar chart. So it says two open, eight closed. What two was opened? What eight was closed? So if you had a proper red log before um, where you explained, where you have those detailed information and then you even want to use a chart now to just say what has been closed what has been opened that would have been better but there was no previous um red log yeah and then you're showing us a chart so that's another one where the information you were passing across to the stakeholders would not be quite um clear enough because i wasn't sure what constitute open or what constitute um, close if it was from a previous one even if it was from a previous one I did you that still uh, a previous report you've given maybe in sprint one yeah you should have still been able to put a slide that helps to give that understanding and not just that that chart alone um that you've given there and then I think for you the last one was um you said the admin account that was one of the I think risk you put down. He said the admin account impacted the project. I wasn't sure how an admin account can impact the project. And that was where I was talking about your um, de your description being vague. Okay. So you should have been able to put down how it did it. Is it that your scrum masters were not able to go on the um, um, Azure DevOps to set up the sprint board? And as a result, you wasted some few days before they started and they couldn't deliver at the end of that sprint. You know, you need to just be a bit specific. What mitigation was put in place? What was done? Has it been resolved? And all that. You should be able to put all that down, not just, you know, admin account impacted the project, technical challenges and all that. So please, um, going forward, just note those things and then um, be able to put things more um, in perspective. So well done for that. I, I love your racing matrix, um, Zekiat. It was a beautiful one. But I just want you to go through the rules again, yeah, and be able to 
and ensure that they have the right detail. Okay, so one of it, the one, the one that just captured my eyes was when you said SM is not responsible for is responsible for developing business case. Are you sure? Uh, you put R, you put developing business case, and for SM you put R, for ADM you put C, and then I think for BA also you put C. I can't remember what you put for uh the um the product owner for business case i would think it's more of the po and the um um ba not the, the scrum master has no reason it can be informed about the business case but doesn't develop the business case so in all of your um the things you've put down for your racing matrix just go go back you can just even if you have to google or use chat gbt to ask that question yeah who in the Scrum team is responsible for da 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 da? That will be able to help you, um, going forward. Okay, so please just note that. Well done, though, for um your presentation. Next, I'll quickly go to Nena, uh, for the Eagles team. I love your project status template. Also, the templates you use, every one of you, not just Nena now, but everyone you've used good templates. But we just need it to have the right content. We just want to see a beautiful you know, template, it has to have the right um, content in it in order for it to, you know, be bespoke as you want it to be, okay? um, Because you, Nina, you used colors a lot, but the colors at the point were confusing to me, and I'll tell you the ones that were confusing. So the log, the, you use the color for them, which is, you know, good uh, for that and everything, your priority, I love your priority column, you know, the ones that are medium, the color you used for it and everything, but some of the colors you use in other section of that log uh, were a bit confusing, yeah? Especially the one for the description um, section, the way it beats confusing. You also, your description was, they're not well detailed, okay? So please, I want you, once you do your red log, assume that you're, you're even though you're presenting it, assume that it's going to get to somebody as a report who you will not be there to explain what those description meant. So it has to be something that they can read and understand what you're saying. Simple, you know, and short, but they can read and understand. Yours also was a bit vague. And then, like I said, the color you use after a point, especially for the headings, they were a bit uh, misleading. Okay, for example, the cost column, you use red. And I was wondering, is are you using red to say, okay, there is an, a high risk here? Um, Is it that the cost was not, um, uh, you're running out of cost? When I saw the red, in your cost column. And then when I read what was inside it, you said yeah, it's intact, you know, it's going as planned, but there is red showing at your cost column and all that. So don't just use color at times to, you know, beautify your template. You have to be careful when you use color because other people will interpret it, you know, in another way, just like I've done saying, you know, the color you use for uh, cost, is that telling me that you're running out of cost? And then I think for your, the the one for um project status, you know, it showed green that you're on track. But at the top of it, there was a yellow saying require attention. Now that's misleading. If you're telling me you're green and then you're saying it requires attention, requires attention is like saying, okay, there's an alert here. We need to quickly deal with it, this. Yeah. So you just have to be careful with all those um little, little things so that they are not misleading to any stakeholder that is reading it or that is um, um having a look at it and the same goes for your sprint deliverable section also where you listed all the deliverables so four of them you color code i think with that uh, red brown kind of and then the last one that talks about functionality you didn't color code it so again i'm wondering okay so why was that left out i just thought okay you were just using color there but then when the last one functionality something something was left out and i read through the status it says completed i'm wondering okay so why didn't you color code that one and with the um, hash brown or there about that you were using so let's be careful when we're using color um in our report it could be misleading and then give another interpretation that you don't want you know the people reading your um um reports to see but well done well done good good content i love the breakdown of your read log i think i love yours you know the way you make the column saying who the owner is the mitigation and then the the priority 
at, at that side also. It made it look so very well. So well done there, Nina. Ian, I'm coming to you. That's optimized. Um, good project status. Okay, so you said uh, RACI matrix. So that's RACI matrix here. Yeah? Just correction on the pronunciation there. So please be careful about that. But good matrix, though, uh, the, the matrix is good. Okay, and then under your project status, um, under your rate symmetry, uh, another one that caught my eye for yours is where you said team charter, and you're saying the team members are informed. Okay, so your team members are not informed when they come when it comes to your team charter. I accept a team charter that is organization owned, and then team members are meant to be informed. But if your team charter were formed collaboratively with the team, then is not, they are not informed, they are consulted, they are part of the agreement to that. So they might not be responsible, you know, for uh, getting that team charter in place, but you consult, you, they were consulted when that was done. So you put informed, informed, informed. So you too, our advice, you go through all the um, details you've listed down and the uh, metrics you've given to, um, each team member and just make sure you have the right um, um, information for them. You're using the right metrics for them and not just, you know, putting anything in. Again, you can do it as a, a, a proper research. Google or use chat GBT to say who does this in the scrum team, who does this, who is responsible for this, who is consulted for this, who is accountable for this, who is informed by these and all that and be able to you know fill your recent matrix with the right information but a good template also like you have there okay and then um i also said that some of the information on your project status would be good to be in your red lock which you didn't have you didn't pro produce the red lock but like the risk and the issue information you have on your project status would have been good on a template with your a red log there because that's where they are meant to be for you to give the description, the impact, the owner um, timeline, if you want to use that, and then the status of that risk or that issue, not for it to be, you know, written in, um, it wasn't even bullet point, but the way you've written it in your project status, it would have been good to be on your red log, but well done also for you. I love your budget breakdown. Even though you've given us an overview of your project, uh, um, your cost in your project status, you now did a proper breakdown of your pro of your um, budget, what each team member is receiving over time, and then what the total is, and you deducted that. That was a beautiful one. So well done for that. I love that that template and you know what you did with your detailed breakdown of your budget over there. So well done, yeah. Okay, so I'm coming to you, legend that Ade Deji, the ADM, okay. The updates, for me, the updates you gave for key achievements and all that is really what I would expect your Scrum Master to give, yeah, and not you. Talking about the number of tickets that were taken in, what UAT, what numbers that um, UAT has been done on, what is remaining and all that, that is um a, a information i expect the scrum master to give and by the time your scrum master was given her uh, own update she there was a time i wrote it down she actually said oh and da, 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 that the adm has spoken about because that is, that is um update she is meant to give as a scrum master your role is an an overview of the project towards delivery, towards timeline. And that is why you have the word delivery in your uh, in your role. You are the agile delivery manager. How is the project moving towards delivery? How is the project moving towards the timeline? What are the things that can impact it? That's why you use a red log to say what, what has happened during the sprint that has impacted things. If nothing has happened, everything had gone on well, then you're telling us that at this point, of that project, the project is green, you know, it's going according to plan. So you're giving an overview, you're not going into the nitty gritty of the stories that were worked on during the sprint. That's not that's not your um 
your the update you are supposed to to give okay so and then when you were also giving your update you were talking about you talked about um when you i think when you're talking about the issue one of the issues and everything you said an issue where uh, with the po and the scrum team your po is a member of your scrum team okay so you need to get some of these things right so you don't go to an interview and say oh the po was having an issue with the scrum team because the po is part of the scrum team is is a member of is it one of the people that make up your scrum team okay so the PO might be having issues with maybe the the, leave, the developers in the in the team or you might say that maybe your PO was having communication there was communication breakdown between your PO and your scrum master but don't say your PO and uh, part of the uh, and the scrum team because they they are one okay so let's be mindful of that and then you said something that I wasn't clear about so I wrote it down I put a question mark you said scrum member of the team okay so just let's get an understanding of who is a member of that scrum team so that when you're giving your updates you're saying the right thing as an ADM you'll be expected that you're so in depth with what um uh, the scrum framework is all about the process how the structure is everything that needs to be in place in a scrum framework even in an agile methodology so you don't want to be making mistakes that they're wondering does this person even know what he's talking about does this person know what scrum is all about okay so please be mindful of all those things get the understanding of you know your your team member research more into it to kind of uh upskill yourself develop yourself develop your knowledge wise and your understanding of that okay and then um your roadmap i i love the fact that you were the only one that talked about your roadmap out of all the adms um but the the funny thing is your roadmap was done in paragraph form rather than it coming in a visual representation Okay, so please be be mindful of that. You can put it in um in uh either use a, a, an Excel spreadsheet or look for roadmap templates whereby you are putting it. You know um the overview of what you're working on. It could be the features that you're putting it in your roadmap, and then you put a timeline against it. Because even the one you presented, there was no timeline against it. You just listed it, like I said, in paragraph form. Or that uh, that you use in giving an update, okay, about your roadmap. And then apart from that, there was no you didn't pre, you didn't give update on any uh, red log. There was no update or slide for any red log. No update for any budget. No update. I said for project status because, like I said, what you give as an update, the key achievements and all that are the things that a scrum master could have given. But um. The good thing about this presentation is that either before yours or after yours, you're able to see what other ADMs have presented and then you're able to use that, you know, to know that, oh, okay, so I can do it this way. This is the way I'm meant to do it. And then you listen to feedback also, please. Don't feel that um, I'm bring, I'm putting you down, yeah? I want the best for you. So I need, there are times when I need to be a bit harsh with you in order to pass the right message across to you so that you're more, because and I know with what you've done today, you will come back the next time and you know you would you would sweep the, the floor and we're saying, come on, I did it. You went back and you came back, you know, to give it to us hot and all that. That is what I'm expecting for you. So I want you to pick all these feedbacks, every one of you, not just at the DG alone, and look at the things that you've not put in place properly, be able to put them in place properly. Already DG is reviewing your CV. And that tells me that you're ready to put those CV out there. But we want you to go out out there, you know, speak confidently, but speak the right things. Let there be substance and content in what you're, you know, delivering to everyone out there. But well done, everyone. Well done, ADMs. I'm proud of you. Well done. Thanks. Ah, thank you. That was spot on. But guys, please, let's take this as an improvement. Thank you so much, Moji, for your time. Um, bon Please, can you just use a minute to tell, remind us on the voting? Temi is going next, so but quickly remind us of the voting if you don't mind, Bolu. Hello, yeah, Bolu. So I already okay. put out the, I already put out the um, the voting sheet. So please do vote. Um, the vote counts, and if you don't. 
sorry, if we don't vote, those who voted get the results and it will be unfair to cry for. So please encourage your team to vote, vote, and yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Bolu. Temi, are you ready for us? Um, thank you so much, Faith, um, Olusheye, Modupe, and AB. Thank you so much for your presentation tonight. Um, your SM lead will give me feedback. Thank you. Temi, go ahead. Thank you so much, um, Mumi. Um, before I actually start, I would like to just say that, I would like to just repeat what, like, retrace, I mean, on what Moji said that whatever feedback that I'm going to give or whatever thing I'm going to say or comments I'm going to give is not to put you down, but it's just to make you better and make you like understand the role and understand what Adja really means. And everybody, every all, all these four scrum masters that put themselves out to actually present. I mean, I know that there are a lot of scrum masters on this platform. But you decided to actually bring put yourself out to do this thing is a good job and is a point for real. So thank you for actually putting yourself out and volunteering to actually do this. Um, so I would actually like to ask, I don't know if any of the scrum masters can actually please commit yourselves and ask and ask out some of the questions I want to ask. Like, do you really understand? the goal and the purpose of sprint reviews yes or no please can any of the scrum masters like unmute and answer like does anyone really really understand the purpose and the goal of sprint reviews Okay, so I would assume that no Scrum Master out of like over 10 or 15 Scrum Masters in this team understand what Sprint Review is and what it is used for. Abimbola. Felix, please just unmute yourself. You don't have to like read up your hand. Okay, Um. good evening, everyone. Okay, the Sprint Review is to, is, is, um, is a show and tell demonstrate what um, the increment and what you have done for a particular sprint. Thank you. God bless you. That's exactly what it is. So I feel like I didn't really see from any of these teams what increment was actually done in this sprint and what you've actually done to achieve your sprint goal. I didn't see what the sprint goal was what was done like okay these are the things that we did this was what was done this was what we could not finish because of this and this and this was these are the actions that we are going to do so i feel like because really i write down every review for all of the things that i did that i do and i gave the same re i mean the same review i'm going to give now is actually almost the same thing i said the previous like two weeks back I feel like maybe we need to maybe meet with our mentors again or maybe have like um a more understanding of what we need to do in the sprint review and maybe take it take into consideration or take it take to heart all the reviews and the feedbacks, really all the feedbacks you get from your tutors and your mentors. So I'll try to take it from each of the team for team Elite. First of all, you're not sounding confident. You did good. I mean, you have really good. The, the most amazing thing about everybody's slide was that you had what you needed to have, to be very honest, in your slides. What you needed to have in your slide, I think you had it. You could have maybe added some more things, but what you need to have in your slides, you had it. To me, like, you had what you needed to have in your slide, but you were not confident. It was, I think it was something when we said, like it felt like you were, like some of you were sleeping and they just called you, please come and quickly do this thing. Imagine that we are your project sponsors, like we are giving you money to actually develop these things, these products, and then we are telling you to come and tell us what you've done in the past two weeks. And then you're not sound so conf so confident. It might not really sp like speak well for you. 
you were using a lot of filler words, like for example, so um this print um we did um it was a lot it was like a lot of filler words that you used, and you said something that you achieved your sprint goal, but did you really achieve your sprint goal because I saw in your burn down charts sixty six percent of the work was done, so did you actually really meet your sprint goal? And you said everything was completed, but according to your bond down charts, I saw that there was five tickets not, not completed out of 11. So like I said, what you needed to have on your slides you had, but I'm not sure you really understood what the bond down chart was saying. I know that over the past weeks, I took my time with some of the, I think one of the scrum masters in your team to explain what it meant. I think I took one to two hours to actually explain all the metrics and I thought that it would have explained it to the rest of the guys, which was fine. But I feel like you can explain what this matrix is supposed to say. Okay, so what is the plan for the next sprint? What was really achieved in the sprint? And you did not finish all the things you committed, what are your plans in the next sprint for those five stories? So like you're supposed to come to the sprint review to explain what you've done, what your team has done, like a review of the sprint, what has been done. This is why we were not able to complete what we were supposed to complete. We have impediment. These are the plans towards the next sprint to ensure that this thing does not arise anymore. So I hope that in next sprint, you can sound more confident and you can really explain what has really happened in your sprints and explain the metrics and give us a review, a proper review of what has been happening in your sprint. Again, really good job on your slides. Really good job for putting yourself forward. And I'm sure that by next sprint review, we'll get something better. And for Team Eagles, again, great job on the wiki page. I'm not sure I saw the wiki page in the last presentation. And again, the same thing, understanding and interpreting your metrics. Your metrics were there. You, you showed us what really happened in your sprint, but you're not able to explain it. You're not really able to explain or interpret the metrics. So what was actually done in the sprint to reach this, the product goal? And what was actually the sprint goal? What was, it, what was your team's goal for that sprint? Were you able to meet any of the, uh, were you able to meet your, your sprint goal? Like what did you do towards achieving your, your product goal? Like was there any in incremental changes towards your product goal? I'm not sure, I didn't see any of those. I didn't, I didn't know what you did in your, in your sprint. I didn't know what your screen goal was. I didn't see anything of such. So I hope that you can put that in your next print review and we can actually see what has been happening in your team. For Optimize, really I was also quite confused. Good content in your slides again, but I was really confused about what was going on. And I, one thing that actually struck my mind about Optimize is that they actually told us action points for next sprint, that they've done their retrospective, but this is what they hope to action upon in the next sprint, which was really good to see. I mean, I was really impressed. It was a good job from the Scrum Masters to bring that out. But again, it's the same thing. I had to go back to your slides that Wumi sent to me to really understand what, what, what you really spoke about, because I didn't even say anything like, your dashboard showing your metrics or your burn down chart. I didn't see anything about your sprint goal. I didn't know what was achieved. I was quite confused. So the same thing really. And also for legend, I was really confused because you are saying something like, so this is our product back, our, our product board, next slide. This is our board, next slide. This is our tax board, next slide. And I was just like, I don't understand like what's what was really happening with the product board. What are like do you want to explain the state or you want to talk, you want to tell us that or the project sponsors that 
this is the state of the product board. These are the number of things we have on the board right now. I mean, you could have, again, you have really good content on your, on your slides. It's just about explaining them really. And your tax board as well. I didn't know if you did anything in this print. Did you complete anything? Did you move anything to done? Was there any increments done? What was the sprint goal? What were you? What do you? What does your team? What did they agree to 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 achieve this sprint? And did you actually even achieve anything? I I saw the the burn down chart as well, but I wasn't sure what it was saying. I I saw the velocity chart too. It was so many things, but I just hope that you are able to explain what actually went on in your sprint and you are able to explain and tell this project sponsors that this is exactly what you want this is exactly what happened in the sprint this is what the developers did this is what they could not do this is the reason why they could not do it and this is how we plan on making sure it doesn't happen again so please in the next sprint review that is happening in two weeks Let's try to make sure that we are actually giving a proper review. If you need to meet with your mentors, meet with them. They are they are more than willing to actually put you through on the on things like this. Meet with them and ask as much questions as you want to ask. So in next sprint, I I hope that we are able to. Be more confident in our presentation. Say what the stakeholders really need to 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 hear, and also like be able to explain everything that you are showing us. Um, that'll be all from me. And thank you again, Wumi. Again, I just want to say that I am in no way trying to put anybody down, but I really, really want you to be the better version of yourselves in your career as Scrum masters, because I know that everyone is more than capable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy. Um, Moji and Tammy that's giving us feedback today. They've really taken their time to analyze this. So, guys, this is now to, to everyone in general because I also don't want to forget to mention them. Please go back to your previous videos if you need guidance on one or two things. Then you need to start to utilize your mentors. Some of you have not started utilizing them. Some of you are just taking back seats on this thing you have to drive this. this i keep saying it i know you've heard me say this journey is yours and yours alone so you need to reach out for clarity for just listening to them they will guide you the more they attend the more you ignite their interest to your team the more they will put in their best to support you so you need to find a way to get through to your to your mentors if you have issues with them please still reach out then another the point for everyone is you need to start your slides on time. That's really what usually happens. Some people don't start their slides on time, so they end up rushing and not putting the full content of what they're supposed to do. That's actually what went on among some of you. So that's what I'm just saying. Let me just put it out there because it goes well with what Moji and um, Tammy has given us as feedback. Then lastly, please learn from your feedbacks. Learn from your other people's feedback too. So if I get a feedback from what I presented, I'm going to take it in and adopt it in the next print when I'm presenting. However, another SM or another ADM, if I'm in that role, you understand, they've given that person a feedback. For example, she gave an, a feedback now that, you know, she liked how a team spoke about their action plans for the next sprint, yada, yada, yada. Take it as a, as a feedback for yourself, even if that was not really yours, because it will help you improve on your slide. Copy with pride is allowed. Copy with pride, but fine tune it to suit your own team. So please, let's always learn from these feedbacks. And that's actually a feedback now that I've gotten from your mentors and the people giving you feedback. Some of you don't adopt to this feedback. So let's try. We can do this thing. We're getting to the middle of this um, race. So by now we should already, we have even, you know, touched the middle already. We have sprint three, four and five to finish up. If you remember we've done sprint zero, one, two. So please don't feel it's too late for you to catch up. 
don't feel downcasted that you've not learned enough or whatever. You still have three solid sprints. Push within this sprint. You'll be seen. Push yourself. You will achieve what you want to achieve with all the very, very varied support around you. Thank you so much and well done, guys. So we'll move to the next role. Um, Bola, I don't mind you taking back this today because I want to push up the DAs and co. Um, so um, Femi, are you ready for a feedback for us? You don't yeah, want me to yeah, give feedback yeah, for BA. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. No, 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 no. You are going to give feedback for BA, but I want the DA to go first, Femi. Okay. All right. So for the DA, Sultani, Juliet, um, okay, there was no DA for Optimind, and then Albert. Well done, guys. You guys did really well. So you get feedback from Femi. Femi, please shoot. Okay. So uh, feedback. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first with uh with the elites, um, you could do with some energy with your presentation. I think maybe because you guys went first, um, everything was a bit low on energy. Uh, you explained the distribution of uh data with charts in Tableau, which is good. You gave dashboards a try, which is also good. Uh, no, you didn't give a dashboard a try. I think that was the second thing. Uh, you highlighted the use of line charts uh to show distribution, which is which is good. Um. You did um I mean you didn't use you didn't do dual axis, you know, with the line charts. Uh, I mean I would have said okay, but the other guys had something better with their comparative analysis using those charts. Uh you did this with the Grant chart, which was good. Your SQL query was 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 uh your proof of SQL query was okay. Uh but based on other presentations, uh, I think you could have done more. Um you said you said uh, something like uh the place was a complex was a complex uh function within SQL, which which I, I, I don't agree with. Uh based on what what everyone else has shown, uh, things like joints are much much complex and much more important. Uh replace is is basically find that replace in Excel. So there's nothing complex uh, to that. So you didn't put so much uh time into compiling this report. So I think overall you can do better uh to show um evidence of what you've learned over the past two weeks i'm going to move on to the egos yes it was a good confident presentation it was straight to the point um you said you had issues with your power bi it was i mean is it is it just one person on this team or maybe if there are two then maybe the other person could have you know installed power bi because it's also important uh you showed understanding of what you've learned in your delivery you gave dashboards a try uh, the first dashboard looked nice. I'm I'm thinking that was what was done in class, because your second dashboard was was not like the first one. Second dashboard was just all over the place. It looked like you just put things together. You didn't really uh, pay much attention to it, and you need to uh, you need to do better with that. And walk around the labeling of your charts on the dashboard. Uh, make sure it's it's describing what the chat is saying. Uh, something brief, something descriptive. If you look at your dashboard that you presented, it it wasn't. It wasn't um, pleasing to the eyes. Um, yeah, you highlighted SQL concepts, but the problem I have with your SQL presentation was what you were saying. For example, what you had as description on the left did not match the images uh, that I was seeing. You highlighted um, things like uh, the use of wildcard, but I was saying something else. Um, and also your stories, uh, I don't expect you to not to write stories, but at least I think the, the, the use of language in those stories would have been better. You had something like, um, I want to import database from SQL database uh, so that I can have database to work on Pavia. If you read this carefully, I mean, slowly and try to understand, even you yourself, you don't understand it. So I think you can give the language a go or maybe sit with one of your DAs and see if you can uh, get the concept of how stories are written so that you can write uh, better stories. It's not your primary duty, but I think you can do better than than this. Uh, also, well done. But also bear in mind that when you compile these reports, um, every, if if you compile it anyhow, just know that somebody is reviewing and you would spot any of anything that you you. Would, I mean, if it was done with 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 the thought of oh, I want to impress or I want to showcase what I've learned. A should not mean be like your description should not say something else and the images you are showing should not um show something else. Uh, this is egos, right? So just an example was some of the I mean you showed 
wild card, something about wild card query, but what, what you highlighted in your image was not the wild card query, although you had the wild card query at the top, but the select statement was was hashed out, which means the query would not have run. Right. So just keep keep bear in mind with some of these things when you um when you do them for the next demo. Um my notes. Uh, optimize there was no DA. Uh, thank you a lot for confirming because I think I missed one presentation last week. Uh, legends, a uh, very good presentation, very explanatory with pointers. Uh, you said you had the dashboard on your tablet, but that was not a dashboard, it was basically charts. Um, last week you had the dashboard and you, you, you gave that a try. So I was expecting maybe you would have done another dashboard, something uh better for us to look at but you had no dashboard it was just chat which was also good because you showed the use of dual axis uh, for comparative analysis using the uh, line charts and also the gantt chart which was good you had good choice of colors with those individual charts it would have been good if we saw everything with a dashboard it would have been really nice if we saw that then um uh, some of the other key words that you have uh, mentioned you said something about data query but what you were showing us was actually the transformation of data in power query which is different so just be careful with the choice of words when you're trying to describe what you're, you're doing uh, you also showed i mean the way you presented it you showed uh, the nice process of transforming data in power query loading it into power bi and doing some analysis which is basically what you'll be doing a lot of the time uh, when you use Power BI or any of these other softwares, because you load, the, you extract the data, which is basically the ETL process. You extract the data, you transform it with these applications. You load it, and then you now analyze it. Basically, you, you explain that perfectly. Uh, you showed, you're the only ones who showed how, I mean, showed that you've learned joints, which is a very, very important concept um, in SQL. Um, you you showed it, you, that you understand it, but I don't think you explained it better. And I think if Mr. Digital Nicole and if he, he, he will probably want have wanted you to explain it better, what joints are used for, maybe like a brief explanation would have been icing on the cake. But overall, this was the um, best DA presentation for today. Uh, you're the ones who showed um, joints, which is a very key aspect for SQL programming. It's not replaced or any of these other functions. Joints are really, really really, really key. And if you understand them now and they come easy to you, the, every other concept would uh, flow in better. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you so much, Femi. Thank you for that feedback. Um, And I hope DAs have taken that into consideration. Thank you so much, Femi, for your time also. So we'll go to the QAs. Um, we have Omar Joe Thompson, um, SA, we have Abim Bola, and then... um. Lastly, Emmanuel. Um, Rita, are you ready for us? Well done, guys. You guys have done fantastically well tonight, also. But just hold your head though, because somebody's coming with gun and machete. <laughs> God will forgive you. <laughs> That's right. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, um, thank you. Well done, well done to everyone that presented tonight. Um the QAs um, from each um, team. Um, so I'm going to start with Thompson. Um, it was great to put yourself forward. Um, it was a great presentation. And um, however, I don't know if it was because you were trying to kind of uh, meet up with the time that you were giving. Um, some of your, the way you were pronouncing some of your um words were not clear to me i don't know if it was just me or because i i think i had you said uh intellig but i think along the line you said intellig somewhere else which is okay but i mean if if you are presenting and uh, or maybe in the case of interview you should be mindful of your of what you are saying regardless whether you are in a hurry or i don't know if it's um um, lack of confidence so but but yeah but it was great that you did put yourself forward um uh, haven't said that and again you you said something you you used the word duties instead of um roles and responsibilities i remember that uh, one of your tutors did mention you should try and sound professional because um with this um uh workplace 
that you guys are having is to kind of build your confidence to make you look like you have um, three years experience in the space of three months. So that is why uh, we are trying to put you guys in the right uh, um, um, line, like trying to pronounce the right words, use the right um, buzzwords and all that. And then you also said uh, sprint, I don't know how you pronounce sprint, sprint refinement or a sprint refinement. I, can't, I, didn't, I think I didn't write it down, but yeah. So just be mindful of how you uh, pronounce these things. And uh, it was so quick and um, you your content, you just had um, what you guys put together, but I didn't see any screenshot of what you guys have done in these sprints. Uh, it would have been great to see your um, test plan and all that. I think uh, Mr. DJ was expecting you guys to present your test plan. And um, I didn't see any steps of um, your framework if it has been set up or not. But yeah, but other than that, it, it was still all right, you putting yourself forward and I would like you to work on your confidence. So uh, I'd like to see you improve on your presentation in the next sprint. I, I would want you to take it, Thompson, you yourself should take it too. Um, I can then give you a, a better feedback of uh, how you've improved and I'm very sure you improve. Um, by so doing, I'll, I'll say, uh, maybe you should react before the presentation itself. So just take your time in your own time, just do a bit of uh, rehearsals and then uh, I'm very sure you do well, but overall well done. Thank you for putting yourself forward. Um, we'll move quickly to Eagle Squad, Oguyemi. Well done, Oguyemi. Um, that's why I said uh, Thompson should come back next um, sprint. Compared to your last sprint, tonight was great. It was effortless. It was clear and concise, well detailed, well structured. You, thanks for putting yourself forward, and uh, you've improved from the last um, presentation you did. It, it, it was it was well better. It was great. And um, however, your test case, I don't know. It, I it, it didn't it didn't go well with me. I it wasn't well structured. I, I think you guys, like uh, Laomi said, you guys need to revert to the videos that you've had in the past. Um, because given you are using your BDD format, I didn't see your outcome. It was a civil, um, your test case was in a declarative uh, format. However, I wasn't expecting to see that, but you kind of added your outcome to your actions. So where you're supposed to have then you kind of added it to your when. I think I pointed this out uh, last time as well. So uh, you guys should go back to your videos. I think it will help. And like Laomi said, use your mentors and all that because I can still see the same mistake repeating itself. And this was exactly what we talked about. So uh, if you are using BDD format, it has to be in the right way. It has to be structured. Use it, your precondition, your actions and your, your outcome, which is your given when then it has to be like that. It has to be structured like that. You you don't use given when and we don't see the outcome. No, we have to know you kind of um, added your outcome to your expected. So on the other side, we weren't seeing it on the user case. I don't know if it's the, again, like as I said last time, if it's what the BAs are giving you, but I expect what the BAs have given you to be on one side and then you're expected what you are getting on the other side. So whatever use case you have, you should present it the way it has been given to you. Let's start from there. Then maybe later on, you can start changing it. You don't have to write it the exact way, but I think that's how we should start. That was why I said, I don't know if it's a declarative test case that you are doing, but I will, I will encourage us to start with imperative. So let's start from the, from the lower part, then we can start to improve ourselves and start writing declarative test cases if that's the case. But yeah, um, like as I said, let's start with giving when and then, please. Um, yeah, and um, you also had your negative um, uh, test on your login, which was great. I think you are the only team that that had that. That that that's a good one. However, I still didn't see your automation uh, framework set up as well. But yeah, I think um, some of you might still be struggling. But don't worry, just use the videos that you have revert back on them and then just um, get your hands dirty. And um, this is to everyone, make sure you guys are 
uh, working on your your slides or uh, sorry your your tax two to three hours daily. And if even if in a case that you finished your tax, you can always pick up something from any website. Just continue to write test cases just to improve yourself and watch videos. But however, um, like as I said, you did very well. It was it was a great presentation, Guillermo. Well done. You did very well. Thank you. And uh, I'm move quickly to up to mind. Uh, Abin Bola. Um, great presentation. Well done. Thank you for putting yourself forward. It was it was it was a very great presentation. You guys had your test plan. You had your test strategy. I think you were the only team that had your test plan. Um, you have to put your test plan in your team charter, and you also had the I think you were also the team that had your the definition of your ready and done. Put that as well on your team charter. Give it to your if you don't know how to do that, um the scrum masters can do that for you. It was great that you guys had that, um, so that everyone will follow suit, use that um to as a guide. Then um you also had all your screenshots of your test case that was executed, which was great. I think you you your team was the only team that did what was expected of them. You kind of understood the assignment that you were given. And um, your test case was also in a BDD format. I think you were the only team that had it well structured. You had the given when then, which was great. And uh, yeah. Um, and I also like the fact that um, the plans for the next sprint was uh, atomized, which was great. And you also had your impediment on the other side. It was a fantastic presentation. Well done, well done to, to you guys. You guys did very well uh, optimized. Thank you, Gabin Bola, for that great presentation. Um, thank you for the confidence as well. Um, moving quickly to Legend, uh, Aide. Uh, well done. Thank you for putting yourself forward. Uh, it was a great presentation. Well done. You did very well. However, uh, you were pronouncing environmental variables. I think it's environment variables. So um, I didn't see any um, of your framework, uh, your for your automation framework. I didn't see. I didn't see much. To be honest, I was expecting more from um, from the legend team. Uh, yeah, well done to everyone that presented. Thank you for putting yourself forward. Like as I said, this is to everyone. Go back and watch uh, all the um, past videos that were done. I know the the framework is still a bit um, kind of heavy on most of you that have not completed it, but just watch the videos. Like in my own case, I remember that I was watching it seconds by second. Trust me, if you do that, you will not miss a step. Just watch it seconds by second. If you miss anything, rewind go back you will not you 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 will you will be able to 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 complete your framework trust me if you if you follow suit so if you follow that method so yeah if you are able to complete your framework then that's good and um you you it will put you kind of ahead and you can do other things as well so for those of you that have not done your um test plan and your test strategy the other teams uh i'll be expecting it in the next print or before maybe mr dg will say well yeah well well done to everyone and um, please work on your bgd formats and uh yeah good luck thank you thank you everyone thank you um allow me that's me done thank you. all righty thank you thank you rita thank you i was actually holding my head on their behalf i was afraid well we thank god we thank god it went well <laughs> <laughs> what are you ready for? <laughs> Rotimi, Demito Pe, Rahman, and Rita. Well done, guys. Bolu, over to you. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, well done on the presentation. Um, yeah, I think every one of us that are giving feedback have a very similar feedback, which is that the feedback we gave the last time wasn't very much implemented um, in this presentation, because I was seeing some of the mistakes from last time. However, I'll just 
go into the feedback um for early team i'm well done on your presentation however i the first thing i noticed was your use case you put the you put the user admin but it wasn't connected to anything so when you do a use case if a user doesn't need to be there, I don't think you need to, like if the user isn't doing anything in the entire use case, there is no point putting that user there. So if you are not connecting this particular user to anything, any of the use cases, what's the point of having it? Why did you have it there? Was it a mistake? Was it, oh, okay, you don't know what to do. If you don't know what to do, have you reached out to your mentor? Um on what to do even though it was a nice attempt but that was the first thing that i saw and i was like okay what's happening and um yeah why is your flow chart not connected um and why is it done in bpmn do you know the difference between bpmn and flow charts do you know the difference between basic flow charts and bpmn do you know the uses? Do you know how to use them properly? If you don't, um, please reach out to your mentor to help you because it's not just about picking the, the flow chart that you feel it's okay, but you need to understand exactly what you are doing with each of them because each of them is telling us a story and is talking us through a particular process. So, I mean, I was confused when I saw your flow charts. They are not connected, even if they are. I mean, you you showed arrows connecting them, but the cross functional flow charts were separate, which it felt like you were talking about two different things. It was just the arrows connecting that made me understand that okay, it's still the same flow chart, but it didn't really give me any story. I didn't really understand it and. It was done in BPMN. Do you know what that is used for? If you don't, um, do your research. It's always better to stick to basic flow charts, except you have to use a BPMN. Um, also, there was a mispronouncing of UAT. He said AIT. Maybe it was a tension. Yeah, well, just watch out for it. And um, also, you don't need to write acceptance criteria inside the acceptance criteria box. The, the, the box is already labeled acceptance criteria. There's no point repeating it. Yeah, hopefully in the next feedback, we'll see all of this. Um, in the next presentation, we'll see all of this. Um, for the EGOS team, well done on your presentation, however, I feel like the feedback from the last time was implemented. You also use BPMN. Do you know why it is used? Is there a reason or you just picked one? And there was so much inconsistency um, in, your, in your process flow diagrams. Some of them were BPMN, some of them were um, basic flow charts. Um, also, one of your wireframe was the NT. I gave the feedback the last time that you don't just highlight sign up, but like what is supposed to be on that page? I didn't see it. Um, I I love the breakdown of your achievement, which was great. You had a really good attempt at your use case. Um, also, um, when you use I saw that in your decision, you wrote mentee mentor. Uh, I'm not sure that's correct because when you make a decision, is it a yes or no? I think I mentioned this the last time. Um, why is that mentor mentee? If you could explain it to me, I will, I will appreciate if you can unmute yourself and just say, oh, this is the reason we put it there. But if not, please do find a way to correct that. Um, and also, it felt like when you did your decision making, you are forcing it down your user's truth. Because when you said, when you got to 
login or sign up, you took the arrow back to, or when you said no, you said that they should follow the login process. So a decision is either to, oh, you can keep, you, you might decide to go ahead with this process or not, because and your decision has to follow something alternative that is not forcing them to do that particular process that you are asking them to make a decision on. Well, um, from what I noticed on your process flow, I thought that like that was what you were doing to your users. So um, if you need more help, please reach out to your mentor, like have a chat with them and let them help you out with, um, with that. Uh, but overall, well done. And please make those corrections. And if you feel like any of your wireframe is empty, you can take it out from your presentation. You don't necessarily have to present it because you are presenting to stakeholders. Um, to the optimize team, well, yeah, I saw the, it was nice overall, but I wish that I saw more artifacts from you guys. Um, there were a lot of content in your, in your, slide but i didn't see a lot of artifact that i can give feedback on um your yeah you had a nice board movement and you captured it up to your uat done and even moving the pbis to done which is really nice to see um you had a nice attempt on your use case diagram but that was all so next time, please show us more artifacts. I think I gave this feedback for that one as well. And then for the for the legend, um, you guys had you put up nice artifacts. I just wish that in your execution slide it was clearer. The text was clearer. So green against black is hard to read. Um, maybe try something else next time. And your process map, that was not a process map diagram. That was completely not it. I don't understand what you guys put together, but that's not a process map. It is more like a um more like more like a a user flow, but it's not even capturing the user flow, it's capturing more of workflow rather than a user flow. So it's not capturing any process. I can't find any process in there. And um, also um, your use case diagram meets what work. I don't think it's necessary for you to put the example that you got from your class and dump it into your slide that you are presenting to stakeholders. I feel like that's lazy work. So as much as possible, avoid it. Just show what you've done. You don't necessarily have to include the example from your your class because I was wondering where is this from? What's the what does this have to do with your project? But then I I figured out that it might have been an example from the class you guys had. So yeah, just take this feedback and try to improve on them as much as possible. Thank you. That's all for me. All right, thank you so much, Bolu, for the analysis. And I hope we've all taken the feedback too. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so lastly, the last role for tonight, Cyber, Ebele, well done. Said, Baba, Sundi, and Lightning, well done, guys. Um, over to you, Lady Pat. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> um, thank you. Thank you to everyone that has um, showed up tonight to present on behalf of their team. I'm going to start with um, Ibili, um, team Elif here. So I, I wasn't surprised to see this. I I, I believe um, this is exactly what we want to see. You need to put your first slide should be to show what you, you have done, just the summary of what you've done. And that's what EBC has consistently done that in our presentations. So she had the slides covering all the four um, 
the three, three topics and the one workshop. I mean, this is what your stakeholder wants to see. So imagine you're giving a presentation. I'm just putting this out so that all the other guys in the uh, cybersecurity team, you, you should take a cue from that. Just summarize it in the first place. And because we like the um, hands-on side of things more than the theory, theory as much as the theory uh, part is important, it will also drive your your what your input into the practical side of things. So, uh, well done for your content, uh, Ibili. I like that you put the, the all of this together nicely done. Um, your the 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 summary headings you highlighted the security tools. We didn't need details. We don't need to see all the details because this is not a teaching uh, room. Um, and you showed um, you showed the, the security tools, you showed the incident response um, uh, our, uh, our life cycle. However, I was expecting to see more more from the side of the exercises that were given, like what you have done with these exercises. So I didn't see that at all in your slide. I was expecting to see that you have analyzed uh, the four, uh, the logs, those four screenshots that you had, the uh, log analysis simulation. I was expecting to see your analysis of that. I think the other guys, they they went um they deeply into that. They all could they all cover that except for a few. So please, um, I know you everyone is trying to just put their slides together and all that. Please don't put it together for the sake of putting it together. There's an objective to all this. We need to see what you've actually done. It is the doer, you know, that that gets the price. <laughs> okay. So um thank you for that. Um Eagle Squad, yes. Um was that Thai? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so um I'm not going, I'm just going to reiterate the summary ability. It would be better if we can all copy that. Copy and paste is allowed here, as a you copy best practice when we say this is the way to do it, please. Let it stick and copy. Because like you're in a room, your stakeholder wants you to present a report from your uh, from what you've been doing as a SOC analyst. The first thing they, they would be happy to see, I mean, you lay the background, lay the foundation, summarize what you want to talk about, and then they are aware of where you're going, where you're taking them. Okay. So thank you very much um, for that. Good, great content. I like that you showed the example of a log analysis simulation. Uh, the four screenshots were there and you analyzed each of the log, um, each of the logs one after the other. Um, but only one thing that I realized from your log um, analysis um, is the, your analysis, please always remember when you are doing your log analysis, always remember that the timestamp is important. Okay, I think you missed that bit out. Uh, I like um, the incident response, um, uh, the um, life cycle uh, image that you put there. You actually, you actually displayed uh, that you 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 did your own research. Okay, apart from what we had in the class, so I could see that you got that image of the NIST framework for a security incident and a life cycle. And well done for doing that. Well done, well done. And um, your incident response simulation, um, yes, well done for doing that as well. Those, um, the, the last three, uh, the last three tasks that we had in the class that we said we should go back and do that. Oh, the four, there were four, actually. You completed that, all detailed, all detailed um, analysis of it, you, the course of action, the vulnerability, vulnerability you could find in there and the type of incident. 
thank you for doing that. Well done. And you also showed us the tools that you used during the sprint. So what I would like to see, like next time we want to talk about the tools. Thank you for showing us the screen grab of the tools. If you can actually do a video, we've had them uh, demos in this, um, not this set, I'm not saying that in this set yet. In previous sets where people would actually like automation test, they would do a video showing the tool in action. If you understand what I mean. So please, uh, we don't want to see the screenshot of the tools next time. If you can show us the tool in action. Thank you very much and well done. And um, Team Optimize, um, yes, you touched on the log analysis and collection, great content. I could see that um, you, 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 I love this set. I love this cybersecurity set. I don't, last year we, we didn't even have time to do all of this because we started late. I can see that you, you all are going out out of what we learn in cl class. You're going to do your research and you're bringing in information. And that is good for you. Like I said, I'll make your, your presentation, keep it very well. It will be your future playbook. You can always go back to it and revise because it's what you've done. I could see the overlap of log management and same features, which you showed clearly in that diagram. Well done for that. You did analyze um, the logs you highlighted. Okay, you uh, you went deeply into the analysis, and yes, well done, well done for that. I I was happy to see that. I was happy to see the timestamp, highlighting the high speed, even to the dates. You know all these details. Uh, they might look really minute. They are important because you may have to refer to them when when you're uh, doing your reporting or you're handing over. Um, uh, well, your your analysis to uh, a security engineer if they need to do something or if there's some further um, investigation that needs to go on. And um, yes, you you touched on the uh, or you also touched on the uh, regulatory bodies, standards, and framework. Well done for doing that. I think um, the other guys did that too, and. Um, also, uh, your incident classification. Yes, well done. Thank you for <clears throat> for completing the incident um, uh, task, incident um, response task. You completed that. I could. You, in fact, I think everyone, everyone did team um, optimize team eagles. Yeah, you you went deeply into that. And you showed the Wireshark. Um, you showed the Wireshark tool. You to give us showed us a screenshot of it as well. Thank you. Great content. Thank you for that. Well done. And finally, to Team Legion, we know as usual, somebody just goes overboard, and he brings in something new every presentation, and that person is lightning. Okay, Lightning, thank you so much tonight. Um, yeah, your sum summary page, please always remember to put that together as well, like I said to others. Um, I can see some sort of <clears throat> some sort of workflow going on around the mentor key browser security um at uh, browser security uh <clears throat> access logs. So I am um, I don't know, maybe Lightning, I'm not sure. Maybe we should just graduate you because <laughs> I don't know what you're doing here. Because you've been, what you've done, you've been able to take the lessons in class. You've taken it back into your project team, into the web application that you're building. And you, you're able to come up with what needs to be done from the security testing side of things. And I hope your QAs are, you they, they are speak you guys are speaking to each other and you're learning from each other QAs. Security is just a non-functional part. Security test is a non-functional part of testing itself. 
in its entirety. So please, uh, you may not be on the cybersecurity course today, but whatever Lightning is doing is like you have a two for one team member in your team. So please learn from him. He's doing such a great work. I'm really impressed. Say that he's able to align what he's learning in class and bringing it into the project. He's the only one that is doing this in the group right now. Because of all the presentations, I'm seeing that on his um on his slides in his presentations. Thank you for um doing going extra mile lightning for doing that. It wasn't part of what we planned for the curriculum, but you are doing it already. And that looks like next set we are going to have to in include this in um, the um, internship program because it, it's something really valuable that the other uh, testers can learn from as well. So thank you for showing that. And you went on to show us the tools that can be used to secure the MentorSkid webpage. Um, and you did analyze the logs, you broke it down, yes. Yes, you broke it down. You talked about the port numbers. You talked about the uh, timestamp. Yes. Yeah, overall, uh, I'm really impressed with what um, you've done. I'm happy. I, I just love this quote, cybersecurity quote. You you guys are just, I, there's, there, there isn't so much to, um, so much to plug. Yeah, honestly, tonight I feel so sorry for the Scrum Masters and the QEs and, yeah, and the BAs, you know. Please, guys, let's ask all the question that, questions that we can ask on this platform. Use your mentors. It's it's really important that you're doing that. And just just step 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 it up. Step, spring three, we want to see better. Step it up. Take all the feedbacks tonight as really, really um, information for you to to get better, to improve. Let's sprint three be better. Start to work on your slides from the beginning of sprint three. You'll find out that it will become easier. You will not rush. I can, I can see some um, typo errors and all that on the slides, you know. But please, let's let's do, let's, let's focus and um, step, step it up. And back to Lightning, thank you. Uh, you showed us um, the network analysis, and you broke down broke down the um, everything into steps. I mean, I think uh, we should we should take a look at Lightning slide on Thursday, guys. Please, um, I'll bring this up on Thursday. We need to look at what he has done. This is really good. We should share it in the community, and we should discuss it and discuss the other contents that the other guys have to, so that we can all glean from each other. And thank you everyone for listening tonight. That is me. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the analysis, Lady Pat. And thanks for all the feedback. So the next thing now is, did you need to decide, are you giving both feedback and also really now the tax for next sprint? Or you want me to stop the recording for the tax? Whichever way, it's your call, please. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll, I think you, you, the feedback was so on point anyway, so I don't need to overplug it anyway. So I will pass on, on that if that's okay with you allowing me. So then I will go straight to to the tax for next sprint anyway.